نستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for who he is we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in our families we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us in our families and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us and our families reach the month of Ramadan Allahumma balighna Ramadan Allahumma balighna Ramadan Allahumma balighna Ramadan Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen so we hear a lot of talks about Ramadan a lot of talks about fasting and the best things to do and the rights and the wrongs and we will talk about Ramadan today, inshallah ta'ala, but I want to start off with a question for just everybody to think about. And we'll talk about it, inshallah, throughout the next few minutes that we have together. When Ramadan comes, inshallah, for all of us, what is the best act of worship to do in Ramadan? I want you to think about this question. What is the best act of worship to do in the month of Ramadan. I had a similar event last night and I, I was talking to some students and they had a lot of different answers. Some of them said, read the Quran. Some of it said, you know, go to Taraweeh. Some of that, you know, give charity and so many different answers. But it's very rare, very rare that when you ask somebody, what is the best act of worship in Ramadan? And they say to fast. And while the best thing to do in Ramadan, the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan is to fast. Now, where did I get that from? The Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is nothing that a servant can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that is more beloved to Allah than that which he made it an obligation than that which he made an obligation. So at the time of Salah, the best thing to do is to pray. Not to give a charity, right? Not to, 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 to help somebody, it's to pray. At the time of Hajj, you know, on the day of Arafah, we shorten our prayers and we combine Dhuhr and Asr. On the day of Arafah, for those that have made Hajj, that's how we do it. That's the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Even though prayers is the most important, why is the Prophet ﷺ allowing us to combine and shorten? Because the best thing to do on the day of Arafah is Hajj, not Salah. In Ramadan, the best thing to do in Ramadan is to fast. Is to what? Is to fast. Now sometimes we're like, really? Well, we're going to do it anyway. The Prophet ﷺ, when he talks about fasting, he wants to expand our understanding of it to be more than avoiding food, drink, and intimacy. Many of us, okay, I'm not going to eat from Fajr till Maghrib. I'm not going to drink. And if I'm married, I'm not going to be intimate with my spouse. That's our understanding of fasting, of siyam. But it's actually bigger than that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicates 29 days or 30 days, an entire month, just for you to stop eating and drinking? Is that really it? Or is there more than that? Where there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, and Sahih Muslim as well. I'm just reading the, the version of Sahih al-Bukhari, by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. And we'll go through it, inshallah, and we'll just share some comments, and then we'll wrap up, inshallah ta'ala. What the Prophet ﷺ, he says, As-Siyamu Jannah. As-Siyam Jannah. Fasting is 
a shield, a protection, something that protects you. The question is, what is fasting protecting me from? What is fasting protecting me from? And subhanAllah, the language of the, of, of the Prophet ﷺ sometimes is so broad because it has so many different dimensions. So for example, when Ramadan comes, this happens to many of us. Some of us have a really tough time holding our tongue from cursing. And every other word is just like the F-bomb. Or you curse and you'll add this or whatever. You'll curse. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a, it's just a, in our language all the time. When Ramadan comes, many of us are watchful of that. Oh, I'm fasting. I can't, I can't say that stuff. Many of us find ourselves very careful not to talk about somebody else in Ramadan. Like no gossiping, no backbiting. It was just, I'm fasting. Even though Allah, technically, technically, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to stop eating, drinking, and not do intimacy. No, but it's bigger than that. Fasting is supposed to protect us from our sins. From the things that we do throughout the year. Many of us, again, this is especially among young guys, who would listen to music throughout the year, but when Ramadan comes, they'll stop listening to music. When the Prophet ﷺ says, As-Siyamu Jannah, that fasting is a shield, it actually protects us from our own sins. It protects us from the evils that we do throughout the year. It's not just about eating and not eating and not drinking. So now you start understanding fasting to be bigger than, than just... So when we say fasting, we're like, okay, I'm going to train myself from Fajr till Maghrib to stay away from the wrong things, to stay away from my desires. Because that's what it's supposed to do for me. The Prophet ﷺ continues. And he says, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَجْهَلْ Yarfuth is often translated as that they're not being intimate with their spouse. It could also mean not to do anything foolish. Not to do anything foolish. So Ramadan comes. The question is, what do I do throughout the day? Sleeping from Fajr to life before Asr is very foolish. It's very foolish. Many of us will stay up all night. We'll stay until Fajr. We'll pray Fajr in the masjid. We'll stay until sunrise and then we'll go to sleep at like 9 o'clock in the morning. Then we'll wake up at 4. We'll pray Asr. And hopefully we don't go back to sleep. We'll stay until Maghrib. That's very foolish. Because then you're, you're, you're missing the whole point. The whole point of fasting of Ramadan is to fast. Now if you sleep more than half of the day, yeah, you're not eating because you're sleeping. But that's not the point. The point is that we are up and running, going to work, staying with our families. And then the difficulties, you know, the anger that happens that hour before Maghrib, you hold yourself from that because it's foolish. Because that's the training that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have. Because when Allah talks about the very famous verse where Allah talks about siyam, it's actually the only place where Allah talks about siyam. He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you can attain taqwa. Taqwa is your ongoing consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you know Allah is watching me right now. I cannot get angry. Now taqwa is not only in Ramadan, it's throughout Ramadan. What Ramadan provides is provides you to fast so you train yourself to do all of these things. Wala yajhal means they do not say anything foolish. So they don't say anything bad, and they don't, they don't do anything bad, and they don't say anything bad. What's fascinating, so the, the word of siyam in Arabic is, uh, it's siyam. So fasting in Arabic means siyam. There's another place in the Quran, where the word Sawm is mentioned in Surah Maryam. I think it's verse number 26. Well, Maryam alayhi salam, she says, فَقُلْتُ إِنِّي نَظَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّةً 
Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, she said that I am going to devote myself to Ar Rahman, to the most merciful. I'm not going to talk to anybody today. The only two times that the word Sawm is mentioned in the Quran, one is about Ramadan and one is about not to talk. And perhaps Allah knows best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us when Ramadan comes. Don't talk too much. Don't talk too much. And it's very difficult. You know, as, as human beings, we always want to have a comment. We always want to say something. We always have an opinion. We always want to have the last part of the argument. I'm never going to let my wife finish that conversation. I got to be the last person to talk. So I can prove her wrong. Or my husband. Subhanallah, Allah in Ramadan wants us just don't talk. Don't talk. Do something else. It's very hard. It's very difficult. You know, subhanallah, brothers and sisters, after a few years of fasting, not eating and drinking becomes very easy. It's actually not hard to fast. Some people do it throughout the year just because they want to lose weight. It's not hard to stop eating and drinking. And then for those who've been married for a few years, intimacy is not also hard either. Right? Because you have the night to do whatever you want. So it cannot just, Ramadan cannot just be about not eating, drinking, and not having intimacy. There's no way. It's bigger than that. It's that I am watching the things that I do outside of Ramadan, and I go into this month knowing, okay, I, I curse a lot, I backbite. You know, I argue too much, or I, I say this, or I say that. So when Ramadan comes, this is what I'm going to be working on. This is, what, this is my training. My training in Ramadan is to stop that. That's how it becomes protection. When the Prophet says, When he says it's protection, it's protecting us from our own sins that we otherwise do throughout the year. And that's how we're able to transform. You know the very famous hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about the two people who died one year apart one died as a jaheed the first one the other one died a year later but just a normal death he wasn't jaheed or anything he died a normal death and then the prophet ﷺ told the companions that the one who died later not a jaheed even though the reward of a jaheed is massive to fight for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not easy and then they were wondering how is the second person who did not die as a jaheed Gets a bigger reward in paradise. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, didn't he spend one more Ramadan? Didn't he go through one more Ramadan than the first one? And that Ramadan made it the whole difference for him. So when we enter into the month of Ramadan, and we think about this idea of fasting, it's not just... It's not just stop eating and drinking. And even the Prophet ﷺ continues because, because we don't live alone. We have people, we have spouses and children. People are going to drive us crazy. So the Prophet says, That if somebody bothers you, if somebody gets you on your nerves, your wife, your husband, somebody in your life, your kids, right? Your co-workers, your other Muslim brothers in the community, somebody pisses you off. Does something that really bothers you. You say, I am fasting. I am fasting. Why do you need to say that? Because it's a reminder that this patience. Now you can go and just pound him for whatever that he did. You can fight back. You can argue back. You can curse them back. You can do that stuff. But then you're missing the whole point of Ramadan. You stop yourself. I'm not going to do that. That is the training. That is the, that is the whole point of Ramadan. Is that we are very watchful of our desires. You know, anger is a desire. Overpowering people is a desire. Wanting to have the last comment in a conversation is a desire. These are, subhanAllah, one of the, one of the most beloved people to the Prophet ﷺ is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr, it's been narrated that he was very, very little when he speaks. He didn't used to speak too much. We actually have very few narrations from the Prophet ﷺ by Abu Bakr. 
he was just very soft spoken and he would speak very little but his iman was better than all the other companions it's not about talking now when we talk what do we talk about that's the second aspect of it because we're going to talk we're human beings i'm not i'm not asking anybody not to talk in ramadan that's obviously not the point hopefully nobody understood that you know, what do you talk about and who you talk to if you want to talk in ramadan okay make it a little different this year if you want to talk in ramadan about anything talk to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk to allah Ramadan is mentioned one time in the Quran. Okay, one time. Allah says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran. Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, where the Quran was revealed. We all know this verse. What is the Quran? The words of Allah. The speech, the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the meaning. It is the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's Allah talking to? To us. So when Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, or those who believe, it's us. The question is, do you talk back? Allah, yani, somebody's having a conversation with you. Do you talk back? Are you even allowed to talk back? I'll share that inshallah in the second part of the khutbah. قُلُوا قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا عَظِيمَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّا وَالْغَفُورُ رَحِمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So this is a really interesting idea, but I really want everybody to think about it this Ramadan. The Quran are the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the direct speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah is talking to you, and you. Allah is not talking in the air; He's talking to us. The question is, do we talk back? Are we allowed to talk back? Are we allowed to interact with the conversation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The polite thing to do is yes. If somebody's talking to me, I'm going to respond. But for me to say that, I need some evidence. What did the Prophet ﷺ used to say? Here's a narration. Narrated by Hudayf ibn al-Yaman. Very famous. We know the first part of the narration, maybe not necessarily the second part. Hudayfa, this is mentioned in Surah Al-Nasai, and it is an authentic narration. It's a Sahih narration. He says, one time I was praying behind the Prophet ﷺ. So he's in prayers, reading the Qur'an. And I prayed behind the Prophet ﷺ. It was not fard, it was not like obligatory prayer. It was most likely the night prayers. And then he says, the Prophet ﷺ started, he would read Surah Al-Fatiha, first rak'ah, and then he read Surah Al-Baqarah. So Hudayfa, Hudayfa is saying, okay, at 10, at 100 verses, he's going to go into Rukua. The Prophet continues. This is just one rak'ah. And then he says, at 200 verses, the Prophet will make Rukua, will go into bowing, he will go down. The Prophet continues. Hudayfa says, okay, maybe he'll finish Surah Al-Baqarah. One rak'ah. Maybe he'll finish Surah Al-Baqarah. And then he goes, he finishes Al-Baqarah, goes to Surah Al-Nisa, and then goes back to Surah Al-Imran, and then he goes back into Rukua. So you can imagine it's about a hundred pages, a little over a hundred pages. One rak'ah. It's not a, it's, hopefully you guys have heard this hadith before. Okay. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay, the Prophet ﷺ, as he was reciting, Hudayfa 
notice something very interesting. He says, كَانَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم يَقْرَأُ مُتَرَسِّلًا مُتَرَسِّلًا Meaning, he will take his time. He will read slowly. He will read every verse. إِذَا مَرَّ بِآيَةٍ فِيهَا تَسْبِيحٍ سَبَّحَ When he would go over a verse that glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يعني when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah, who's Allah talking to? To the Prophet and to all of us if we were reading the Qur'an. The Prophet will pause and he will say, SubhanAllah. وَإِذَا مَرَّ بِسُؤَالٍ سَأَلْ And he, if he would pass by a supplication, a dua, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that dua. So if he's passing by some verses of paradise, he would pause and say, Oh Allah, grant me paradise. وَإِذَا مَرَّ بِتَعَوُّذٍ تَعَوَّذَ And then he would pass by verses of seeking refuge and protection from hellfire. He would stop and he will seek protection from hellfire. I want you guys to imagine how long that took the Prophet ﷺ. It wasn't just reading. It's much bigger than that. He was having a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was having a conversation. When the Prophet ﷺ, because it's a little bit different for us because many of us read and we don't understand. Even the Arabs here, Sometimes we read the Qur'an, we don't really we understand some parts of it, but not the whole thing. The Prophet had a different experience. The Prophet understood everything. Even the companions, there was an incident where the Prophet ﷺ was through the Najm by the Kaaba, and there were the Kuffar behind him listening, and when he went into prostration, they followed him. Even though they were Muslims, but they understood. Because the meanings of the Qur'an are very transformative. They change us. That is the power of the Qur'an. Now, you want to read, you have amazing reward. In every letter, you will get rewarded. But this Ramadan, sit with yourself for a couple of minutes and make it about understanding the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has been talking to us for years and we've never interacted. We never even paused and said, what is Allah trying to tell me? And the Prophet used to say that. Many of us, at the end of Surah at when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ What do we say? Bala. Somebody said that. We, we talk back. وَنَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Allah, we are witnesses. We talk back. And there are so many instances, like there are so many examples like that. Even though that, that, that bala is a weak narration, يعني. but the point is, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Ramadan is about two things. Watching our desires, of wanting to talk too much and say things that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we really, really want to talk, we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has been talking to us through His words for a very, very long time. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us reach the month of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this the best month of Ramadan for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist and aid us in fasting the days and praying the nights. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Qur'an very beloved to us in this month of Ramadan. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa yisrafana fi amrina wa yisri allahumma ala al-haqq yaqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Abad Allah, rahimakumullah, ittaqullah. Yaqul al-mawla azza wa jalla fi kitabi al-kareem. Bada naqul a'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Inna Allah wa malaikta yusallun ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim. Wa zidu wa barik wa anam ala habibina wa rasulina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa aqim salah. الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو واستقيموا وتدلوا يرحمني ويرحمكم الله